Welcome back. My name is Andrei Suslenko. Um, we are here at the Tiger Conference. Ivaris Abramovich is joining me here. Thank you, Ivaris. We have uh, 20 minutes uh, with this program. And uh, as you know, Tiger Conference's idea today to cover Ukraine's Vision 2020. And that's what I want to talk to you about. How do you see Ukraine is changed in 2020? Do you see that we're going to stick to what we have right now, 2016? Or maybe we, we're going to go, go for the decline to, I don't know, 2007, fifths, or we actually will um, advance. And what do we have to do to advance to 2020? I think it's very important to set uh, the bar high, which was exactly the case when uh, goals uh, and vision for 2020 were outlined. Uh, unfortunately, the reality, and I'm part of the reality check uh, panel, the yes. final panel at uh, this conference. Unfortunately, the reality is such that uh, we are running out of steam in terms of uh, reforms. We laid foundation last year for microeconomic stabilizations and for some growth uh, in economy this year, but uh, there's so much needed structural reforms in this country, uh, there's, there's less of them. Because reforms always need to be front-loaded, so they had to be in the first, in the second year post-Maidan. Uh, now the populists, uh, the enemies that should have ended behind the bars are no longer afraid uh, of uh, the reformers. Uh, now they are setting agenda at times. Uh, so I'm not uh, naive, I'm uh, very pragmatic. Uh, I think we're running out of steam and it is very, very uh, uh, concerning at this stage. I, I agree with you and I, I spoke of record of the record with uh, some ministers who are current ministers and uh, some uh, former ministers and uh, they're running out of steam. You're right. Uh, they, they say that we can withhold maybe a couple of more months. And uh, of course, my following question would be, what's going to happen if there is no steam, no steam anymore? Are we going to go back to Middle Ages? No, we're not going to go <laughs> back to Middle Ages, but uh, when I was... Uh, Announcing my resignation, I was asked by the president to come back and uh, you know, he said what we need to do to get you back and I said why, why are we talking about me? Let's talk about what it takes for normal people, for reformers, uh, to work in the government. Uh, and at that time I said that uh, you know, the necessary ingredients are such that uh, there is no obstruction uh, uh, to the reform uh, process, uh, that there is support and at that time I said that we are either two steps away from the breakthrough or two steps away from a breakdown. Yeah. It's all up to the where we are HR now. decisions. Are and Ukraine has always uh, uh, decided to choose the middle ground. So uh, we will be uh, <laughs> muddling uh, through. Uh, we will be, uh, you know, in small uh, steps uh, moving forward. Uh, but the world is changing so fast. And patience, uh, normally, of electorate is running out uh, really fast as well. So uh, I think this is not an acceptable uh, model uh, of economic uh, development. So um, uh, we're certainly not in the Stone Ages. We're certainly not in the Middle Ages. We are where we are, but uh, we are so far behind. You know, when um, our neighboring countries, uh, when the private businesses and the governments are implementing things like the agile management system even in governments in case of Norwegian government that means you know that we are really really far behind is there any possible way we can reach this target where like like Norwegian government what they do what should we do what should we change in short I guess political elites need uh, to change I mean what I learned, what I realized during my uh, short uh, tenure in the government uh, is that um, those people that are in the government, in power for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, they are by definition uh, incapable uh, of uh, changing the country. They simply don't know how to work differently. And as we certainly know by now, that what was done before Maidan is, is absolutely wrong, is absolutely unsuitable for the, uh, for the modern uh, age uh, to take the country uh, to the next uh, level. So yesterday we had a reform fuck-up night, yeah. the TEDx-style uh, discussion. 16 speakers, all former uh, public servants in government, National Bank of uh, Ukraine, Prosecutor's Office. Um, 450 people in the audience, another 2,000 on the waiting list. And when I saw these people, I said, what the hell? How did we let all these people go? In a private sector, 
if the CEO let all this talent go, he would be fired immediately by the supervisory council. But obviously what was very uh, pleasant and uh, made me feel optimistic that Ukraine has this extremely talented crowd. And since Ukraine is a land of uh, second opportunities, second chances, Yanukovych <laughs> made a comeback yeah. after being uh, uh, knocked off uh, completely following the Orange Revolution. Yulia Tymoshenko is making a comeback. I am certain that when the right time uh, comes, uh, young reformers now with more experience will get a second chance as well. We just need to be ready for that. I've asked, what are the key mistakes that you've, you've made, you and uh, your colleagues, so you don't want to make them in future? Yeah. I think uh, there are some mistakes that we did ourselves. Uh, first of all, uh, I would point out uh, to the fact that uh, all these uh, wonderful reformers that were in the audience uh, and on the stage, uh, uh, we were all taken out one by one. We should have stuck together much more. One by one? Instead of uh, you know, being endlessly involved, among other things, into internal intrigues as well, our enemies wasted no time and continued to steal money uh, from the state or you know, got their ratings up by uh, you know, talking total bullshit and nonsense that was against uh, the spirit of the reforms. So lesson number one is that reformers need to stick together, Copyright. support each other at uh, all times, because our enemies will destroy us with our own uh, hands. And our unity is really what uh, they are most uh, afraid of. That is lesson number one. Uh, lesson number two is that um, I implemented higher salaries uh, for state-owned uh, right. enterprise uh, top management, and that's why we had a much uh, better uh, quality top management for the key companies like Ukrainian Post, Ukrainian Railways, Ukrgas, Vodobovani and so on. But we fail to implement higher salaries for the public uh, uh, service. Uh, Vlad Roshkovan from National Bank right. of Ukraine pointed out very clearly that to pay good salaries, uh, market salaries that would keep extremely high level uh, quality of the bureaucrats uh, for longer, we only needed one and a half billion uh, grivna a, a year. year. A year. Grivnas. Prozoro already saved uh, 7 billion. Uh, Ukraine after discount that I slashed away uh, for Kolomoisky, 2.5 billion uh, grivna savings. Uh, National Bank of Ukraine, um, you know, uh, a few billion as well. Naftogaz, 25 uh, billion. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I would go on and on uh, with the list of uh, savings. So can we or can we not afford uh, to pay uh, the right people the right amount of uh, salary so that we once and for all shrug off uh, the old uh, system and move on. Who is against it first at, at, the, at, at the first place? Are politicians or are Ukrainians who don't understand or haven't been communicated, communicated well enough that um, public servants need to, to be paid very well? It's two things. Society does not accept higher salaries for public uh, servants Why? as long as they see the type of electronic declaration uh, revelations oh, okay. that they saw. <laughs> yeah. uh, but society would certainly accept higher salaries if, they, if everyone followed what we did in the ministry. Firing 50% of the bureaucrats, paying more to those uh, that remain. So the state has to be much smaller, much more professional and higher uh, paid. I think society would accept that. But those in power, those with endless amount of cash, according to the declarations those are not interested they are interested in you know cash being paid on the side because once someone accepts cash in the next envelope there is already you know an order what to do next who to appoint and so on and therefore the system you know uh, continues uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 be basically in the, in, in, in the circles, same mode, uh, as before so two years ago Things were exactly the same like today, meaning the circles. And so the system has, hasn't changed, basically. No, the system is uh, trying to stage a comeback. I think uh, a lot of us uh, uh, fought uh, the system quite successfully, laid off a lot of uh, wrongdoers, right. uh, a lot of evil uh, people. But uh, as uh, a number of the reformers uh, continue to... Uh, abandon uh, government uh, offices, we unfortunately see uh, some of the people that we fired uh, but are uh, making a comeback and this is very, very uh, sort this of concerning. Disturbing. So, so far 
my only hope is uh, on the government as uh, right. such. I think uh, Parliament is uh, malfunctioning, is incapable of uh, passing the uh, most uh, needed uh, reforms at times. So, um, but in any case, the, the reform pace is slowing down. You mentioned, you mentioned that your team or the team of those people who have been, uh, have been on the teams of different ministries during the reforming time. So, when the right time comes, you can, you can all shoot again together and be connected, be united, not to let anyone get rid of you one by one. But what has to happen uh, so this chance would appear? You mentioned elections. I think it is very important to uh, realize that the outcome of early elections would be even worse than uh, the outcome that we have right now. We might get a much worse uh, type might. of uh, parliament as well. So uh, uh, the biggest evil when it comes to elections in this country is uh, the single mandate district uh, uh, sort of a uh, system. I think uh, Ukraine took an obligation uh, in front of its own citizens and in front of our foreign partners to change the electoral system already in the first quarter last year. It was not done. It is no. very clear that those so-called majoritari shiki, the single yeah. mandate district uh, uh, people, they continuously uh, bribe uh, their uh, electorate and once they spend the money to get elected, they want to make a return on that so-called investment once they are in the parliament. So we need to really get rid of this uh, corrupt uh, uh, electoral system, have open party uh, list uh, uh, election and move on. Only in this type of electoral system shall we uh, expect a positive uh, outcome and the, the new forces uh, uh, can uh, really count on a positive result. Do you see yourself... So first, electoral law changes, right. then uh, elections. Then elections. Okay, I agree. I agree. 100% agree. Do you see yourself on the list of any political party when the law is forced and it's changed and then elections are happening? Or do you see yourself uh, as a minister again? Well, I uh, massively enjoyed uh, my uh, time as a minister. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, we have done... Uh, a substantial amount of work, uh, even more remains uh, to be done. Uh, so I certainly would not mind uh, uh, working in the government uh, again. Uh, when it comes uh, to political parties, I think again, reformers uh, now tasted uh, uh, what it takes uh, to be in the government. They can get a job done, but it is very clear that in any democracy, uh, to have a meaningful impact on the political life in the country, uh, you need to uh, go, unite as a party, and uh, make uh, an impact uh, through the uh, through the election uh, process. So uh, I certainly support uh, all the bright, uh, uh, all the new and talented uh, people uniting and uh, and, and and going and uh, uh, winning uh, election uh, under whose leadership uh, that would be. Uh, what would be the name of the party? That's the question. That remains to be seen. Uh, it is hard to see any of the existing parties uh, appealing 100% uh, 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 to the people that were yesterday in the audience of the Reform Fuck Up team. Ivars, um, what drives you? What is your main driver of working in, for Ukrainian government, for Ukrainian people? I think acknowledgement of the historical perspective uh, of uh, it's a sense of purpose. I certainly believed, you know, before I came into the government that we had a historical moment to go down to the history books as the greatest country, as the greatest government that had reformed the country in a very, very difficult period of time. And since I believe in leapfrogging, we immediately could have adopted the latest, the, the, the newest uh, the simplest uh, procedures, uh, uh, laws, uh, uh, technologies uh, that are uh, present anywhere uh, in the world. Uh, I think the challenge was uh, enormous and I like uh, the challenge uh, myself. I'm a positive uh, person, so the, the dirtier, the harder, uh, the more exciting uh, that opportunity is for me. I do understand it. Thank you for sharing. Um, have you been have you been doing conducting your business while you were away from uh, from a government government job? Uh, no, uh, I sold my shares when I became a minister. I spent uh, 12 years uh, building that company into one of the largest and most successful uh, 
Western companies investing in Eastern Europe, but that is history uh, right. already. I'm looking at some other investment okay. opportunities because this is what I have been doing for 19 years. So this is what I know uh, best. Last year, uh, last week, I was, for example, in Iran, looking at some investment opportunities uh, with uh, some of my former uh, colleagues. Uh, as I was walking out of the mosque, which I uh, visited as, as part of the um, uh, sort of a um, the tour, uh, tour uh, I, I bumped into uh, people from the National Bank of Ukraine that were going into the mosque really? to also visit after hard uh, uh, work uh, day. So it's, it was an unexpected place where we met. Uh, but yes, uh, I see myself returning uh, to the business, uh, even though uh, certainly not leaving you know, the, the, the political uh, life of mine uh, uh, because I think there are still a lot of uh, challenges remaining and opportunities and uh, we need to stay uh, uh, on the lookout uh, that once the opportunity presents I would like uh, to certainly help uh, the right uh, uh, type of people to uh, unite. So in, in the end investments of course is the key over here since you left the position of a minister how how the landscape investment landscape has has changed in Ukraine I think there has been uh, not many changes um, I think that economy is growing we laid the foundation for that and uh, much of what government uh, right now is doing is a continuity of uh, what we have uh, studied so that's good uh, investors are not flocking in uh, huge crowds uh, here because economic growth uh, needs to be a bit uh, stronger uh, purchasing power needs to be restored uh, but most importantly the main reason what investors existing and possibly a uh, new appointing at is is the lack of rule of law uh, the the courts uh, the prosecutor's office the secret services are still not working in such a way that would encourage most importantly more investment from existing investors right on a daily basis, we continue to uh, see cases where business is being harassed. In the Ministry of Economy, we try to you know, present ourselves as business advocates. Together with the business ombudsman, other ministries, National Bank, we try to fight all these evil forces that uh, try to intimidate business on a regular basis. I think government uh, needs to be more supportive uh, towards the existing business, who in their turn will be the best ambassadors of a success story called Ukraine. Interestingly enough, now two offices for investment promotion was set up. One reporting to the Prime Minister, one reporting to the President. So it is going to be very, very important uh, to see what their sort of the first steps are. And I really encourage them uh, to uh, look after the existing business instead of immediately going out and trying to attract new businesses in the faraway countries. Do you see that these two um, offices will prevail, will actually do the advanced job or not? Or you think they're just a facade? Well, they have a very difficult task uh, for sure. Oh, yeah, because for sure. as I said, I mean, the main argument why more investment is not coming from the business is not currency control, is not uh, capital control, is not even war in the top three. It's rule of law, it's corruption, and uh, it's you know the, the the court system so we need to fix uh, this and unfortunately it's not up to those two offices uh, to fix it it's it's very much i think in the powers of the uh, president uh, to fix it and uh, it remains to be seen whether he uh, uh, does that or not but what is expected from those two offices uh, i fully uh, believe uh, in the people uh, in the leadership behind those two offices that they will then do a maximum uh, of, uh, of, 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 of the job uh, uh, that uh, they can do. Thank you very much, Avaris, for your time. Thank you. Hope you will succeed.